The Kosovo War, a war that erupted in late 1990s, was a tumultuous and deeply rooted struggle marked by ethnic and political tensions in the heart of Kosovo. At its core, the battle resolved around the rights of the ethnic Albanian population, spearheaded by the Kosovo Liberation Army, UCK. While the UCK is a fascinating subject that I might explore in the future, this video, however, will predominantly center on the life and accomplishments of the legendary UCK commander, Adem Yashari, and his brother, Hamza Yashari. The roots of the Yashari family lie deep in the ancient soil of Lower Prekaz, a region embedded in the heart of Kosovo. Prekazi itself consists of four distinct neighborhoods, each carrying a legacy of its founding brothers, Yashari, Kodra, and later on, Meha. At the helm of Yashari family was its patriarch, Shaban Murat Yashari, a man deeply connected to the Albanian history. He was married to Zahide Gezi, who came from a lineage steeped with patriotic figures. Together, they were blessed with three sons, Rifat, Hamza, and Adem, and five daughters, Hava, Zula, Zoya, Chamile, and Halima. In the challenging winter of November 28, 1955, within the village of Lower Prekazi, the captivating tale of Adem Yashari's extraordinary life began. Adem Yashari, a name that would forever be etched in Albanian history, entered the world on a date of profound significance. On that day, Jerz Kastriot Skenderbeg boldly hoisted the flag of the double-headed eagle at Kruja Fortress on November 28, 1443, marking a pivotal moment in the nation's past. Siktar! Diri nuk bjotnuna un! Nearly five centuries later, on November 28, 1912, Ismail Chemoili proudly raised Skanderbeg's flag in Vlora and declared Albanians' long-awaited independence. Growing up in the village of Prekazi, Adem finished elementary school in his hometown. His educational journey later took him to Mitrovica, where he finished his technical high school. Like many young individuals of that time, Adem and his brothers, along with cousins and friends, found solace and inspiration in the Yashari family house where stories of Albanian heroes were shared and celebrated there. These stories served as a beacon of hope and a reminder of the indomitable spirit of the Albanian people. In the years leading up to the 1980s, after the death of Yugoslav President Josip Broz Tito on May 4, 1980, Albanians pushed for more cultural and political rights, sparking tensions that culminated in 1981. 
as Albanians became increasingly marginalized for demanding self-determination within the Yugoslav Federation, sporadic protests began to grow in Kosovo. What began as a small-scale protest on March 11, 1981, escalated into a massive uprising by March 26 of that same year. The Yugoslav regime responded by tightening its grip on the Albanian population, declaring a state of emergency in Pristina and Mitrovica on April 2, 1981. Amid these oppressive conditions, Adem's anger towards the Yugoslav regime grew, fueled even further by the remarkable bravery of Tahir Meha and his father, Nebe Meha. On May 13, 1981, Tahir Meha was confronted by Yugoslav police in Skenderai market due to his holstered gun. The situation escalated after Tahir opened fire, killing nine officers and injuring two. Evading Yugoslav forces, Tahir reached his home and was joined by his father, Nebe Meha. Meanwhile, as the sporadic gunfire continued throughout the night, Shaban Yashari and his sons felt powerless to assist the Mehas without jeopardizing his family's safety. After 22 hours of gunfire, Tahir made a daring move, neutralizing a tank with a grenade, but was fatally shot. The next day, Tahir's lifeless body, riddled with bullets, was found near his home, while his father was discovered dead inside their demolished house. A few days after the gruesome battle had ended, Shaban Yashari, along with his sons Hamza and Adem, paid their respect at the funeral ceremony of these fallen heroes. With unwavering determination, Shaban gave a solemn vow to the holy graves, pledging to continue their struggle and take up arms against the oppressor. Leading up to the breakup of Yugoslavia, Slobodan Milosevic assumed leadership of the Communist League of Serbia. When the meeting began, Serb after Serb claimed the Albanians in Kosovo were making life impossible for them. <laughs> Atmosfera ishte të mdosun jo tolerante, kush do që flitkes që ishte sa ma ekstrem ofendën të shqiptartë, fynë të shqiptartë, fiton të aplauz ma shumë. Mi kuqa dhe shqivim o të tona me osnu në shqelja, ali në vakëm në që ne, ne i ne. And on May 8, 1989, he became the president of Serbia. This witnessed a gruesome crackdown on Albanian rights in Kosovo, a trend that gradually escalated. As peaceful protests continued in Kosovo, the Serbian regime intensified its repressive tactics, focusing on student demonstrations in Pristina. A crucial incident that drew international scrutiny occurred at the University of Pristina, which sent shockwaves across Europe. 
As the Serbian authorities resorted to tactics such as tear gas to suppress the protests, the situation reached a critical point when hundreds of Albanian students were transported to the hospital in Pristina, where they exhibit symptoms of dizziness, nausea and breathing difficulties. When forensic reports were made public, they confirmed that the Serbian regime had systematically poisoned Albanian students, which in turn raised international concern about the severity of the repression. The initial idea of a non-violent demonstration that began in 1981 eventually gave way to a more confrontational movement during the beginning of the 1990s. One such movement with strong ties to the Communist Party and roots firmly established in Europe was the People's Movement of Kosovo, the LPK. Although the LPK operated in secrecy the movement actively advocated for an armed uprising in Kosovo. It was during the 1990s that the seeds of taking up arms began to sprout. In a top-secret meeting in late 1990 between the LPK leaders and then Albanian communist leader Ramiz Alija reached an agreement to assist a group of volunteers from Kosovo in conducting military exercises for an armed uprising in Kosovo. The call to arms resonated profoundly with Adam, who wholeheartedly enlisted to the cause. To evade the attention of Serbian authorities, the volunteers received strict instructions to keep their plans secret and tell their families that they were seeking job opportunities abroad. While some volunteers departed from Pristina airport and others from Skopje, they made their way to Zurich before regrouping in Trieste, Italy. There, many of the group members met each other for the very first time. Shortly after their brief reunion, they boarded a boat from Trieste heading to Duras in Albania. High up in the remote mountains of Dait, in the village of Surel, just outside Tirana, a dedicated team from the Albanian army's general staff welcomed the initial group of 53 men on October 1st, 1991. On that very day, the rigorous military preparation commenced which spanned for 30 days. A week before the first group finished their training, a second group had already taken a different route, reaching the barracks of Sorel on November 1st, 1991. This second group, which was led by Adem Yashari, along with friends and relatives such as Sahit and Murat Yashari, Fadil and Ilas Kodra, and other brave Albanians from Kosovo and Macedonia began their military preparations. When preparation for a third group were set in motion, their plans were abruptly interrupted because the Serbian authorities had been informed of their activities. To ensure the safety of their mission, Adem chose not to return to Kosovo the same way he came. Instead, Adem gathered a group of 33 well-trained men and armed with infantry weapons, crossed the border on foot on December 2nd, 1991. Aware that their presence would eventually be discovered by Serbian intelligence, Adem and his family took precautionary measures 
by monitoring from strategic points around their village in case of an imminent attack. On the evening on December 29, 1991, Adem received a grave warning from a trusted friend that the Serbian police were approaching his location. Adem and his brother Hamza quickly gathered a small group of friends and relatives and sought refuge in the neighboring village of Kotra. A few hours later, Adem and his brother Hamza returned home around 4 a.m. on December 30th, 1991. Thinking that the danger was over, the brothers decided to go to bed. At around 5.15 in the morning, Adem woke up to tend the wood burner. Suddenly, he noticed a flickering of flashlights in the distance. When Adem approached the windows, he saw that his family house had been surrounded by Serbian military police. Realizing the immense danger, they decided to protect their family by confronting the enemy head on. As soon as they opened the gates of the southern entrance, they were met by a barrage of gunfire. After 40 minutes of tense gunfire, the brothers bravely held their ground which in turn halted the Serb police from advancing any further. When the brothers noticed it, it enabled a strategic retreat for them. After a relentless pursuit by the Serbian police, Adam and his brother finally reached the hillside a few hundred meters from their home, ready to continue the grueling battle ahead. As echo of gunfire reverberated across Trenica, friends and family members from all corners gathered at the hillside, including their cousin Sahit Yashari and their uncle Osman Getsi, to stand in solidarity with the brothers. As more reinforcements from all over the Drenica strengthened Adem's group, and intensify the conflict even further. Suddenly, an unexpected silence descended upon the terrain. Prior to this, Kosovar politicians from Pristina had brokered a ceasefire with the Serbian police. As the Serbs were ordered to fall back, Adam and his companions, who were totally unaware of the brokered deal, seize the moment and retreat deeper into the forest. According to Serbian reports, three Serbian policemen were killed that day and one officer was seriously wounded, succumbing to his injuries days later. After about a month in hiding, Adem and Hamza finally returned home and reunited with their loved ones. The fierce confrontation that erupted in Prekaz on December 30th, 1991, ignited a beacon of hope, sending a powerful message throughout Kosovo that a group of men in Prekazi had defied the Serbian military police. Following that pivotal day, Adam and his brother Hamza engaged in numerous clashes with Serbian police forces, including the Battle of Drenas in 1992. <laughs> May Thura Kambash a legend, Ali the Tikando Tikando Yademi Ashari the Tikando. It has truly been an honor making this video. 
and I have genuinely enjoyed every minute making it. I want to give a special thanks to the illustrator Ken Art for his collaboration in this video. Please visit Ken Art's social media and give him some love. Links to Ken Art's social media in the description. Last but not least, I want to give a big thanks to both old and new members that continually contribute to the channel. You guys are truly, truly amazing. Thanks again. Until next time, Tung.